Maybe you've worked with Azure SQL and Azure Functions before, but did you know that there's an Azure SQL triggering capability? Learn all about it this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Drew. Drew, thanks so much for coming on the show again. Thanks for having me, Anna. It's great to be here. Um, always so much fun things to talk about in the world of SQL with you. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit more about Azure Functions. We're going to be talking about the Azure SQL Trigger, which might alarm some people. Uh, hopefully, it's not too triggering. That's a terrible joke. Um, but we're going to be talking about that. Uh, you know, Drew, I know we've had you on the show before and we've talked about Azure Functions, but as a reminder, can you tell us like why people use Azure SQL and Azure Functions together and, and how we're making it easier for them? And then, you know, what's the news about this trigger thing? Yeah, so Azure Functions are a, a, a nice resource available in Azure where you've got this serverless, um, really you just ship your code. Uh, that's why kind of developers love it is you're not worrying about the the infrastructure behind it nearly as much as you would be with deploying VMs or even containers. And across five different languages, C Sharp, PowerShell, Python, JavaScript, and Java, you can ship out this code and then you've got this really nice scalable architecture where you can start it based on a number of events and then have it do other actions through what are known as bindings for Azure functions. With SQL, there are SQL bindings for Azure Functions. So there's an input bounding and an output binding. And that gives us the ability to more easily read and write from SQL. The trigger. The trigger is really cool. Now, I know I'm biased, but the trigger is really cool because it allows us to start Azure Functions based on activity in SQL. Cool. That's awesome. I mean, I can see like a lot of use cases for both input and output bindings, as well as the Azure SQL trigger. I got to ask, and I think our SQL viewers are going to be curious too, like what technology is being used under the hood for the SQL trigger? Yeah, so the, the SQL trigger relies on change tracking in the SQL database. You now, change tracking is a technology in both Azure SQL database, SQL server, and Azure SQL managed instance. So as long as you're database has connectivity to Azure, you can leverage the input binding, the output binding, and SQL triggers. There's a huge range of uh, data estates that can leverage Azure functions through this. And like you mentioned, the, the applications of functions are almost endless. Like you can use them for infrastructure management or building an app or some kind of ETL for data engineering. There's a lot of options. Awesome, cool. Now, Drew, whenever you come in the show, you always have some really excellent demos. Like, I'd love to see this in action. You know I love a good demo. Uh, so I have what is a really basic, we'll call it almost an order or product management app. Now, I, I, I decided to have like a day of fun in, in Node.js and JavaScript functions. So obviously graphic design is my passion. And I have this nice little list here where I can switch between product categories and get different lists of products, as well as dive into our order history and see if we have any orders in the system for that product. So there's a number of queries going on in the, the back end of our database. So what, what has been built here? We have our database. We have a static web app for that portal front end. And then we have Azure functions that are running those API calls. Every time I select a category, it needs to pull up the products in that category. Accomplishing those input output binding uh, uh, interactions with Azure functions and the, through SQL bindings is much simpler than you could um, almost ever imagine if you come from the world of needing to grab a driver and open the connection and then handle the result set. So for example, if I am going to pull my category list to run a query and handle those results, I tell the Azure function, what is the command and what's the connection string? And it gives me the results of that 
in an object that goes into the function. And so in that function, we can pass that response back. It is really, really quick to start setting up basic APIs. Nice. The, the, the astute viewers are like, well, that's so simple. Like, how do I, what about parameters? What about store procedures? There's so many other things. And I, I don't want to leave the impression that this is overly simple just because it's easy to use. So another example is that little pop-up that we had where we said, hey, how many of these items have we sold? We're passing in some kind of parameter, clearly. And in this case, this is a, a stored procedure for the product sales from last year. Someone much more familiar with the database schema wrote that stored procedure for me, and I need to pass it the product ID. So in this case, we're using stored procedures, we're passing in parameters, and I can get that ID parameter from the route that's being called. So in that case, we can see that that product sales summary was called to our Azure functions right as we were using it because I'm testing and developing locally. Nice, that's pretty cool. Um, quick question here. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope this doesn't detract. Uh, you're showing like several functions. Is it all part of one static web app? Because static web apps, right, has functions and the, the front end? Yeah, that's that's it's a, it's a great question because you can have kind of all these variations in your architecture. And one of the reasons why I mentioned developers kind of love Azure Functions like they love Azure SQL is you have different options for how you put it together. In this case, I do have a, a single Azure static web app um, that's been kind of compiled to that uh, those static files. And then I do have a single Azure Functions instance that it is calling to. So it's handling the proxying between the static web app and the functions. You can call to multiple Azure Functions instances. So let's say you have different teams building different sections and they want of your app and they want to use different languages. So one's going to write Azure Functions in .NET, and one's going to write some in Python. You can have separate instances. In this case, I stuck with JavaScript. I went with a single instance. Azure Functions are scalable, and so they're going to respond to the load. And that includes the SQL trigger, which we'll get to in just a second. And so the, the you don't have to necessarily think, oh, I need multiple instances of Azure Functions to handle a large amount. Uh, you can deploy your code once, and then uh, the functions will scale up and out. Nice. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. So on, on to, on to the, the trigger example. So we've got... Uh, the input bindings and the output bindings that give us objects in our functions. But the SQL trigger is kind of the tricky one where you obviously always want to be careful if you're using a trigger involved in SQL. Like you could slow your app down. Like that's almost the worst thing you could possibly do. And with change tracking is happening on the database, the database itself is logging any, just like the name suggests, changes to a change tracking table. What is happening at the Azure Functions la layer is the Azure Functions that have been deployed with SQL Trigger check the database on a preset interval. So it could be every second. You could set it to longer if you'd like. But the Azure Functions are actually checking in with the database to see what changes have happened. What this really means is that the database is free to have any changes. Your your, your, your transactions, your load on the database, if you have thousands or millions of orders every second, those are not waiting on Azure Functions for anything. It's the Azure Functions that check in with the database, say, do you have any changes? Yes, you do. And then the Azure Function grabs those changes and parses them. You can customize the batch size, but what's great about the batching that happens in the SQL trigger is you can even say, at this batch size, I want you to then fan out mm -hmm. because we can uh, we can instantiate additional functions instances if we see all of a sudden I have a bunch of changes waiting to be processed and you don't want to wait. No one wants to wait for change, uh, ch change tracking. And so we go ahead and have that happen. So just to recap, we haven't slowed down our database any further than enabling change tracking. And now the function's checking in with the database to check and respond to activity within sub-second times. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah, definitely. 
In the example that I brought today, uh, in this web interface, we can add products, we can view products, but behind the scenes, we have an order management team that when an order arrives, they need additional things to happen. And for that to happen, they'd like to tie into event hubs, but this is all in SQL database. So now I have this kind of application connectivity uh, architecture question of how do I connect between Azure SQL database and event hubs? And the answer is with 15 lines of code. I kid you not, 15 lines of code for this SQL trigger to respond to new orders that have been entered by pushing those right out to event hubs. And this is all in, this is all in uh, JavaScript. So it's just going to take our SQL trigger definition for order entry. Anytime activity has happened on the sales order header table, this function is going to run. And within our 15 lines of code, whenever it sees those changes, we can check by the order type. So this is saying only on insert, do I want to do this? And then it's going to push it out to another binding. This is an output binding for event hubs. And so those kinds of things happen almost in real time. Now, if I process some orders into my database, let's see here. Do we see anything happen? Oh, look at that. Now I've got a bunch of logging in my code um, to make sure that we have um, kind of some noticeable output to see right here on the screen. And the, the new product trigger executed almost immediately. And we can see the, the, the payload that it received from the SQL trigger. And it just let us know that something happened and we've inserted a new row, and then the changes got passed through. And so that, that execution was really quick. In this case, sending it out to event hubs took just over a second and a half, but it responded to those changes in SQL almost immediately. And you can scale, scale this up um, for lots and lots of changes at once. That's why we iterated through the array. So it's going to parse 100 orders come in all at once. SQL, uh, the SQL trigger function fires once, grabs all those changes and responds to them immediately. And this wow. is relatively low code in terms of how much code do I have to write to know to check in with SQL, handle those, make sure I grab all the values from it. It's, it, it's nice to see how quick you can add event-driven architectures to your SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, or Azure SQL Managed Instance. Yeah, definitely. This is a super cool example, Drew. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show and kind of explaining to us how the Azure SQL trigger for Azure Functions works. Um, I'd love, you know, just any final words or words of advice or tips and tricks for folks who are just getting started with this or have yet to get started with this. Yeah, I think my my favorite piece of advice with Azure Functions is use use the language that you're familiar with. Um, sometimes I say it's like, you know, you have a hammer that you hit everything with when you're trying to work on something. And so with Azure Functions, you get to keep using that hammer. Like if you're good at PowerShell, you can use PowerShell and still use SQL bindings and SQL trigger. Um, so the, the SQL input output bindings and trigger are available for all five languages. Um, so if if you're if you see Azure Functions in C Sharp and you're like C Sharp is not my thing, there's four other languages that you can try out. So there's 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 no reason to not see what you can do with SQL by uh, tying in with Azure Functions. Awesome, cool. I love that, Drew. Um, Drew, thanks again so much for coming on the show. Uh, to our viewers, if you like this episode, we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more so you can try it out today. Uh, leave us a comment and let us know what you think, uh, especially what you think of Drew's demo. Uh, I'm a big fan. I love the 15 lines of code, really less if you count the lines that didn't have uh, code on them or the common lines, but neither here nor there. Um, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, like I mentioned, and we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.